Greetings, everybody, and welcome. Uh, this is the end of the first day. I hope you are all doing well. I pray that the Lord, and I do believe He is moving in your lives, and the Lord wants the best for you. And sometimes His best doesn't line up with what we think is best but we must learn to trust him and not to rely upon our own understanding but to seek his will and his face in all things um, I had scriptures lined up but I'm just going to talk um, today was okay the enemy tried to throw some things as usual to try to get you off and there's some times I thought about giving up but I just thought about it when I thought about you guys and the prayer request I said I can't do it and that kept me in the game so thank you guys for sending in your prayer requests I believe this is the will of the Lord to do this for you all and not only is I believe God will answer your prayers according to His will and His wisdom that He can also deal with things in my life and how I let my flesh override me in a lot of areas. Um, but the Lord is gracious in it. So, Through this fast, if you're joining me, we in Psalms 35, 13, it says, we humble our souls through fasting. And the reason why we humble our souls through fasting and how that works is, let's go back to Genesis when the Lord created this world and his intention was to put a being on this planet that was like him, that was made in his image to rule this world like he rules the spiritual world and we live on a physical planet and God knows that for you to have authority on this planet you must have a physical form which is your physical body and this body has to have a heart and a mind and it has to have muscles to function to pick up things on this planet and the Lord knows this and Satan knows this the Lord said he gave us dominion over everything in this planet, over the earth, over the fowls of the, of the air, the birds, and the, the beast of the field. And he said over all the earth, he gave us dominion to rule, to reign as a being like God in this planet. Okay. So in the beginning, when God created everything, it was perfect. It talks about in Corinthians that we have a spiritual body. And you can also check this out when the rich man that didn't feed Lazarus that was outside the gate, when he went into hell and there was a gulf separated from him and Adam, I mean Abraham, he said, touch the tip of my tongue because you know, it's, you know, I'm thirsty, you know, and it's hot and dry. And he had eyes, you know, he could see. So you have a spiritual body when you step out of your body, okay? And when you've been reborn in the image of Christ and you, you've been born again, you receive that spiritual body except it's full of life. It's no longer in death, okay? It's, you know, it's resurrected in new power and in, in, in that Zoe God kind of life that, it, that exists, you know. So when God corrected that through the, his resurrection and the rebirth, Okay, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> so the Lord, th that same life and soul was breathed into this body that the Lord fashioned for Adam Okay, on this planet. Because he knows for Adam to have authority in this planet over all the earth. So when he says he's, and he rules over all the earth, he's talking about everything. Down to the, the molecular elements of this world. The neutrons, the electrons, the protons. Okay, all the molecular 
things, Adam had dominion over those things. There was nothing he didn't have dominion over on this earth. Okay? So the Lord knew that you had to have a body to have this dominion. All right? So he breathes into Adam, and Adam becomes fully animated into this body. Okay? And he can touch things. He can, you know, till the garden. He can, you know, eat food. Okay? So you have to have a body for this to work. And when he did this, this body had no death working in it, okay? It was in perfect union with his soul and with his spirit, okay? So, the spiritual body, okay? So there was no division between the two, even though there were three elements in one, okay? There was no division, there was no uh, segregation, there was no... It was in perfect union, the body, soul, spirit, all right? And it worked, there was no rebellion. Imagine a body that did exactly what you intended it to do and you didn't have to fight against every time you wanted it for instance if you want to go exercise you know the war you have to go through to exercise or to lose weight or to stop lusting or to stop uh, craving things that you don't know you know you shouldn't be doing or eating or just our body that never got weak it was never weak or tired or you know just you don't understand what I'm saying okay it was a machine this body was a, this body is not you the you you but it is a part of you okay and it's still you because it's a part of you but it is not the you okay but the point is this body was not in rebellion against Adam's will or the will of, of his spirit or the will of God it was not in rebellion okay it was in a perfect it had no sin in it all right let's get that down all right. Now, after Adam fell, all right, this body, and along with the spiritual body, died. Okay. God's Holy Spirit had to withdraw. Okay. The life of God had to withdraw. Okay. So now there was no longer uh, His Spirit to keep this body in check. His power was no longer there to keep it in check and with the spirit okay so it died it was a withdrawal of god and whenever you withdraw god from anything you die okay just like when you pull a plant out of its source it dies okay so basically saint adam got plucked out of his source and he died spiritually and physically okay and his soul was heading that direction as far as losing the relationship that he had with god his closeness and his oneness okay so this body that is full of death okay developed its own mind its own will because it's in death okay it is no longer operating from life so therefore the things that it does is <clears throat> contrary its enmity between God your spirit okay and the Holy Ghost all right this is why we must humble it, okay? You must bring back the union between your spirit, soul, and body if you want to operate in the power of God as much as possible, okay? I'm not saying you can't operate in some uh, aspect, but if you want to get reach the full potential, then these things must be in union. Okay, let me read Romans 6 to you real quick, okay? All right. It said, know you not that so many of us are, were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into this death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been glory, uh, planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. And knowing this, that our old man, which is the old nature, the old body, is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, this body of sin, that, that henceforth we shall not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more, death has no more dominion over him. For in that that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he lives, and he lives unto God. It says, likewise, you reckon yourselves 
to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto, unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. It says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust thereof. Neither shall you yield your members instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness of God. So, Jesus resurrected, okay? And he crucified that old body. The Bible says we should be likewise like him. We should, in principle, because in reality, God looks at your body as though it's dead, okay? Because if you've been born again, you have taken on the image of what Christ has done, okay? And he's been brought to life. Okay, so therefore, this body that you wear cannot rule. First of all, it's considered dead under God, so God don't even recognize this body no more. Okay, it's considered dead. It's wiped away. It's going to be destroyed, and you're going to get a new body. So therefore, consider it dead. Okay, just like Jesus Christ defeated it on the cross. Okay, now that that life that's in you has to reign over this body. Okay, now. Let's go back to authority. Therefore, if your body, which is controlled by the mind, okay, and then therefore your spirit it, behind that is controlled, is supposed to control your mind, okay? This is why the Bible says you must renew your mind with the Word of God because you must line your mind up with what's in your spirit, your new nature that God has given you, okay? So therefore, if your body and your mind does not agree with what the word says or what, what your spirit and your nature has set uh, the set rules that it plays by in the spirit of life and it rebels against that then you lose some of that authority in this earth that normally the spiritual could actually uh, perform through okay so think of it like this Let's say my spirit says, you know, I need to have a prayer answer, okay? But your mind, since it's in death and rebellion and you have not renewed it and you have not humbled it, says, I don't agree with that, all right? It says, I can't believe that. I can't see that because it don't make sense, okay? Your body is operating in carnality. Your mind is operating in logic and two plus two plus four. It can't see beyond the, the uh, what do you call it? The normal way the world functions. Okay. So when your body, when your mind and your heart and the Holy Ghost and the Word says, "I'm healed," if your body doesn't believe that and it hasn't been conformed to that or humbled to accept that, it will not grant authority for the Holy Ghost to pass through and heal you. Okay. This is why we humble it because it wants to resist everything that God wants to work through you, all right? And this is what fasting does. Fasting breaks it down, okay? It causes it to relent. It causes it to accept, okay? Paul said, I buffet my body, okay? Because he keeps it. He had to be at the... Paul even talks about being in fastings a lot, okay? It keeps his body in subjection, to the will of God and to the spirit, to his soul and from his into his heart. And from his heart. So this is why we do this. Okay. So God can work through this body that has authority in this world. And if this body says, I don't agree with what God is saying, then it it because it has authority in this planet it rejects it and then God can't work through you but if you can cause it to humble itself and not to rebel against what God is saying then essentially it lets the Holy Ghost in its power and its power to pass through you to answer your prayer in this world so God can change whatever molecular things he needs to change whatever things that needs to happen like wind if the wind needs to blow the sea apart like in Moses's time okay then God uses the power to flow through you to to interact with whatever in this world needs to be to that needs to be uh, changed or moved by His will. Okay, 
That's why Paul said, that's why it says in Ephesians 3.20, God is able, exceedingly able, excuse me, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us, okay? So, don't think that God's power is coming from somewhere else, okay? God answers your prayer through you, okay? If the power of God is not working through you, is not working in you, and it's being hindered by your flesh and by your mind, okay? Then God is limited on how he can answer your prayer, and he addresses this in Matthew 17. And he's talking about your unbelief, okay? Because your mind does not believe what you're saying. You don't believe what the word is saying, okay? But you have to cause it to submit and humble itself, okay? You have to do that. God's not going to do that for you. God gave you this body to deal with. So you deal with it. You humble it. So God can work through you, through this body, and then go into the world, okay, and do whatever is necessary. It talks about that, and I believe it's in Luke 4, where, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not looking, so if I get this wrong, forgive me. So, you know, where Jesus went into the wilderness to fast and pray, and it says that he when he was led into the wilderness, okay, but then when he came out, it said he came out in the power, okay, after he did the fasting and praying, okay. God, even Jesus had to do this, all right? So this is why we do this, and this is why God is wants to help you guys get past the flesh and that's me too okay I ain't no I'm not walking in perfection not even close so anyways God bless you all this is just the end of the first day and we'll get into this a little bit more tomorrow and uh, I'm praying for you guys I'm praying may the Lord open your eyes of your understanding may the God of this world Satan I ask God to cancel his plans against your life and that your eyes be open and see what God wants you to see okay and to fall in love with him okay fall in love with God because he has your answer don't run from him and be patient and know that the Lord is working towards your good all right God bless you all talk to y'all later